Hi you guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. This is Olympia D here and I'm coming back to you with another episode on my series of strange occurrences. So this case is coming out of Brooklyn and it happened in 2005. I'm going to read the articles and I'm going to give my opinion on the facts. Rashawn Brazell was a 19-year-old teenager from Brooklyn, New York, whose dismembered body parts were found days after he disappeared from his home in 2005. His suspected killer was charged with his murder in 2018. Rashawn Brazil was born in 1986 in Brooklyn, New York. He was known as an intelligent, helpful, and kind young man. Rashawn's mother, Desiree Brazil, recalls him telling her that if he ever left, he wanted to be remembered for great things. His mother says that he loved to help others, such as taking food out of their home to give to their neighbors who didn't have food, or giving his shoes to another child who didn't have any. Rashawn was very generous and compassionate to others. On Valentine's Day of 2005, Rashawn planned to leave his home in Brooklyn, New York, to meet with his accountant and then meet with his mother in Manhattan for lunch. However, at about 7.30 that morning, Witnesses recall seeing an unknown man ring the doorbell to Rashawn in his mother's home, and Rashawn came downstairs to meet him. The witnesses then said that both Rashawn and the man went into the subway at Gates Avenue Station, and it is believed that they exited at the Nostrand Station in Bedford Stuyvesant. This was the last time Rashawn Brazil was seen alive. After he was reported missing on February 18th, Subway workers found two bloody bags full of body parts on the track near the Nostrand Avenue station. Fingerprints positively identified these body parts as those of Rashawn Brazell. An arm and a leg belonging to Rashawn was later found at a recycling plant in Greenpoint, Brooklyn. His head has never been found. The brutality of this case made local and national headlines. The New York City Police Department searched all over for clues and evidence to find out what happened and who did this to Rashawn. But eventually the case unfortunately went cold. A new lead finally came in the case in 2017 when police arrested Govin. He was linked through DNA to the murders of Brooklyn teenagers Chanel Petro Nixon and Sharabia Thomas whose dismembered bodies were found disposed of in similar ways to the murder of Rashawn. At the time of his arrest for his connection to Sharabia's murder, he was hours away from being released from a jail in Florida after being held for unrelated charges. He was then sent to New York to face these murder charges. After being linked to this murder, police decided to look for other similar murders in the Brooklyn area to which they came across Rashawn's cold case. It was then discovered that Govan lived right across the street from Rashawn and his mother at the time of Rashawn's murder, and he supposedly disliked Rashawn because he was gay. After having an outburst in court and refusing to get fingerprinted for the murder of Rashawn, investigators were eventually able to gather enough evidence to charge Govan with the murder of Rashawn Brazil. Investigators have suspicions that he may possibly be a serial killer after being linked to even more murders. After years of the case being cold, Rashawn's family and detectives are relieved to finally have the person who was responsible for the death of Rashawn put to justice. And hopefully he will be brought to justice for the murders and assaults of any other victims he may have out there. Rashawn's mother and family continue to allow Rashawn's legacy to live on as the great young man he always was. And therein lies the end of the article. So this case is beyond chilling and horrifying so this guy killed this young man because he was having anger towards his sexuality and he also raped and killed two other young girls so it's very very scary but the thing is is that he was found in florida so a lot of these serial killer are transient so that means that they go all over so that's what makes it so scary because they could be anywhere and the police didn't know that this person had done this to these people. So he traveled and he was arrested for something else. But he was really the culprit in this situation too. So it's very, very dangerous. But it's a very eye-opening thing to see how these killers work. 
They travel all over. They go from place to place. So it's very difficult to find them and keep a tab on them unless they're really on it, which unfortunately the police are not. May this young guy rest in peace. I know he's in a better place. Also, the two other girls who were harmed by this man. Um, leave it in the comments section what you think about this case if you've ever heard of it. Uh, like and subscribe. Stay tuned for more true crime videos. Stay safe, everybody.